This game was wild, man, because, oh, I could not believe the outcome that I witnessed in this Kansas City Chiefs game here. It was just crazy to look at, bro. Obviously, it was a great game. It was close all around. I'm very proud of a couple different things here, and I, I got to go ahead and admit it um, right off the bat is, you know, Falcons defense ain't none to play around with. I think, you know, at this point, it's evident the Falcons have a legitimate defense, as I've stated in the previous uh, weeks, right before the season, and even in the upcoming games of the season, and all through the season. I've been saying it. That defense is nothing to play around with. Um, we've seen this game come down to the wire. Kirk Cousins did his job of driving the ball downfield. He got the ball downfield. This offense has looked better and better as time has went on. It's aging like fine wine. And I think this Atlanta Falcons offense is going to continue to get better and better as time goes on. Because we've seen a play call a lot more fluent. We've seen uh, the plays executed a lot more fluent than what we've seen in the past. Kirk Cousins is actually getting the ball downfield. Bijan Robinson is still rushing for a good amount of yards on the ground. We're seeing the offensive lineman block key guys and have some good plays there however the thing that concerns me huh, I know I just just talked about how great the play call was but we also seen the Falcons have a stupid 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 play call um, at the end of the game fourth and inches fourth is inches game was on the line and they decided to do an outside run to B. John Robinson there and I kind of want to dissect this play because Watching it, you know, when, you, when you're looking at it, the intensity is high. You think it was just a, a terrible play call. You think it just wasn't executed. It was, it was just insane. You're fourth in inches. I'm a firm believer, hey, run that shit up the middle. Don't be scared. Just hit the hole. Who cares? Kirk, dive in there. Who, it doesn't matter, bro. You're fourth in inches. You just got to go for it. And, and like, hey, punch it up the middle. That's my belief. Obviously, they did something different and Come to find out, you know, in some interviews, Kirk Cousins said, hey, it was better. It was the call. It was the call. B. John Robinson actually said that it was Kirk Cousins' call, which is okay. I respect it. And looking back at that film, you see it was Tyler Algier. He missed a block, a crucial, crucial block that would have really made this play work. And then, obviously, we could have been looking at a different ball game. Um, but before... All of that even happened. It's so much to unpack. So much to unpack. We had the P.I. call in the end zone that could have completely changed the game. Um, I, I, I say, you know, going back to the play call, it was poorly executed, missed the block, and it could have changed the game. However, let's rewind and work from there. Because in order for the Falcons to even get the ball, to have that opportunity to go downfield and to have the opportunity to call a bad play or to not execute a play, they had to get a 3-0 against the Kansas City Chiefs. They had to stop the Kansas City Chiefs three down straight. And damn it, they did that. And that, that deserves like a lot of praise. It's not going to get the hype that people want and it's not going to get all the glory that everybody's going to celebrate for. But you got to realize, bro, after that no call pass intercept or after that no call uh, pass interference that Kyle Pitts should have received, the Chiefs got the ball back. But the Atlanta Falcons defense still somehow managed to stop the Kansas City Chiefs and got a three and out. Like, that's something the Falcons should be proud of. That's something they should definitely be applauding and be happy about because that's not an easy thing to do. Most teams that go against the Chiefs and their defense has to get the ball back for the offense to have a chance to win a game. The game is over. We know the kind of offense that the Chiefs have. We know how great the Chiefs are uh, on both sides of the ball, really. So for the Falcons defense to stand tall, not only once and twice throughout the middle of the game and throughout the clutch moments of the game, but the crucial, the last stretch that could have really solidified the win for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Falcons defense stood tall and they got the ball back for Kirk Cousins to eventually go down and, and have a bad play call, whatever. But that's something you should be proud of. And that's a positive you can see through this game and that you can carry on to next week. It's because you know your defense is riding high on some, some sort of momentum. They're going to go play the, the New Orleans Saints, which is going to be tough. Obviously, it, it's going to be a rivalry. It is a rivalry game, so obviously it's going to be tough. But you have the Saints at home in Atlanta again. And you know your defense is solid. They play good already at home. Just so happened things didn't happen to go their way. But you can live with a loss like that. Fans, we hey, we going to struggle. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons fans, we going to struggle because we going to be like, look, that was a BS no call. We need to call. But above all, you did your part 
you executed plays, especially on the defense. And as long as that offense continues to age like fine wine, the Atlanta Falcons have absolutely nothing to worry about in the upcoming weeks. I think they're solidified. They're going to be straight. You play the Saints, you got your division play coming up, and it's going to be tough because, as we know, we've been saying that the NFC South is really a toss-up all, all year. It's going to be a toss-up. The Buccaneers, they've been looking pretty good. The Saints obviously look like a different team. Derek Carr's been playing good. And then, oh my gosh, I really hope the Panthers don't just kind of emerge as another sleeper team in the NFC South because Andy Dalton, that man balled out. He balled out. He did his thing. I'm happy for him. But I really don't need another contender in the NFC South right now as an Atlanta Falcons fan. So I would just say, this: these are the teams we're going to see in the next few weeks. So it's going to be tough already, but... Above all, hey, continue to age like fine wine and continue to get better each week. And Atlanta Falcons have nothing to worry about in terms of um, how great they'll be and getting in the playoffs and and, and being an elite team in this conference. So I, I think they got it. And even though it was an L, it's something to build off of. It's something It's something where you, you continue to keep some momentum. You learn and you look at different things throughout the game that you could have done a bit better. Uh, shout out to to, to um, uh, the uh, man, uh, my running backs, my running backs on the Falcons, man, they be doing a thing. Uh, B. John Robinson, I don't know why, I just brain farted on his on his name, but man, B. John Robinson, I, I keep looking at the game and throughout the the game, watching how he's protecting Kirk Cousins, and, and man, that's tremendous, man. His pass blocking is amazing. I'm loving it. I'm loving watching him pass block. Uh, and, and, you know, this is an element where most running backs don't even want to do. But I, I, he's taking these hits for Kirk Cousins, and it's 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 dope, man. It's dope to watch. Uh, we just need need to execute a little bit better down the stretch, and, and things will be all right. We'll, we'll be good.